What's up guys, in this video, we're gonna work on how to factor a quadratic trinomial when A is equal to two. And we're gonna focus on factoring either in your head as well as using the box method. And we're gonna do this over five different examples. I hope you enjoy. All right, um, so what I'd like to do for this problem is again, we have two y squared plus y minus one. So again, what we wanna do is we wanna factor this. So what we're going to do is to help us with the factoring method, I'm gonna do A times C, and then put B on the bottom. A times C is negative two, and my B is one, because the coefficient on my Y is just gonna be one. So now I'm gonna think about what are all the numbers that multiply to give me negative two, but then add to give me positive one. None. Oh, well, yeah, write down the fact. negative two and one. Three. Right, you can do negative two times one, no, no, or negative two work. times negative one. So but which one of these multiply to give me, well, they both multiply to give us negative two, so, so what is the only one. combination correct? that add up to give us one. Two minus one. Okay, now, here's where it gets a little bit confusing because what we did when A was equal to one, these were part of our factors, right? Yep. But now what we're going to do, I'm gonna show you the factoring by grouping method. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna take these two terms and we're gonna rewrite them as our middle term. All right, why don't I have to write them as their factors? No, why do you just put it in the middle? Okay, because look at 2y minus y gives us what? Y. Y, right? So in essential, is this expression the same value as this expression? Yes. C. Yes, the values are exactly the same, right? But what I did is I did this to find how I can rewrite my two values, okay? Do you see how they're the values are the same? Yeah. Y is the same thing as 2y minus y. Now, what I do is now since I have four terms, I need to factor by grouping. So what I do is I group the first two terms and I group the last two terms, right? This is the factor by grouping that we worked on. Yes? How'd you get two y minus y? It's, yeah. No. It's, that's positive two y, and then that's the negative one y, which is just negative y. I took my two factors as my middle terms. Or I took these two terms, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, what, do I, what can I factor out of here? You can factor out a two y, which leaves you with a y plus one. And here I can factor out a negative one, which is gonna leave you with a y plus one. And this all? Well, then, how do you get what? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you in the back. First, uh, whatever you call it, multiply. How do you factor out? Yeah. Well, remember when we look at this, what is the GCF? What do what divides into both of these? Two and y divides into both of them. So remember, what do we do when we have the GCF? Divide both terms by your GCF. So your GCF is two y. What's two y squared divided by two y? Y. What's two y divided by two y? One. one. Does that make sense? That's how I got the y plus one. Then here, remember, you want to get this to be the same. So if I have negative y minus one, if I want to get that to be a y plus one, I'm going to want to factor out a negative one. Then what you notice is I'm going to have these are going to be exactly the same. So now I notice my GCF is y plus one. So when I factor out or divide out my GCF, I'm left with y plus one times two y minus one. Is there a shorter way to do this? And that is going to be my factored way. Yes, absolutely. So when doing the box method, it's going to be exactly kind of the same, similar thing, all right? You're really going to be doing exactly the same thing as far as finding your factors. So we're going to do um, A times C, which would be 4, and then my B is going to be 5. All right, you multiply your coefficient and your uh, constant, you get the top number, and then you take your B and down there. And what we want to do is we want to determine what two numbers multiply to give us 4, but add to give us 5. So we look at the factors of 4, which would be 4, 2, and 1. Four and and we notice that, yeah, positive 4 and 1. We're going to do that. So in factoring, uh, what we looked at is we think of multiplication, right? Factoring is writing a product as multiplication. So the way we like to think about this sometimes is if you look at a, a rectangle, and this is what I kind of explained to you guys last class period. If I give you the area of 16, can you write 16 as a product of, or as a product of two numbers? Well, yeah, of course. You could say, well, if the area is 16, you could say that both side lengths are equal to 4, right? Because 4 times 4 gives you 16. And that's exactly what factoring is doing. You're taking a number or an area, 
and writing it as a product of two terms, or sometimes even uh, multiple. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our rectangle and we're going to say, all right, so what is the area then? Well, the area is 2x squared plus 5x plus 2. Well, it's going to get a little difficult, though, to put in three different boxes into my rectangle. So what I could do is I could say, I'll put my 2x squared here, and I'll put my 2 here. But then, like I did in the grouping one, remember when I wrote those middle terms as two different terms? Instead of writing 5x in both these boxes, I can use 4x and 1x. Because what's 4x plus 1x? 5x. 5x. So it's just like that grouping, what we did. Um, but it's just a way to represent it. Yes? Is that where you put the x and where you put the 4x? Nope. Nope. Either way it work. All right, so now what we do is we just want to figure out what two numbers multiply to give us 2x squared. All right, so you could say 2x and x, right? Because 2x times x equals x. But here's where it gets a little confusing because you guys have to remember, you want, always want to have your positive, you always want to use integers. So 2x times what is going to give you x? Well, that's, you're going to have to use fractions for that, right? Because 2x does not evenly divide into x. So what you're going to want to do is be careful of this. Make sure that each side length divides into each of your boxes. So therefore, you're going to want to write this as x and 2x. Because the 2x divided to both of these? Yes. Does x divide both of those? Yes. So 2x times x is 2x squared. x times what gives you x? Plus 1. 2x times what gives you 4x? Plus 2. So therefore, you have x plus 2 times 2x plus 1. <coughs> Final answer? Okay, so x goes into 2x squared 2x times, right? Because x times 2x equals 2x squared. x times what gives you x? 1, right? x times 1 gives you x. I'm trying to find the area of each one. Well, I'm giving you the area. I'm trying to find the side lengths for each area. So therefore, this area is 4x. Four, four well, if I know one length is 2x, what does the other length have to be? 2, because 2x times 2 gives you 4x, right? And then 2 times 1 gives you 2. Does that make sense? OK. Um, and so there you go. There's your answer. So ladies and gentlemen, what they're asking us to do on this problem is they're asking us to factor a polynomial, all right? And when we're looking into factoring, remember, if you guys remember the definition of factoring, definition of factoring is to, you know, when we took a number, that was to write it as a product of numbers. So if I said factor the number 12, do you guys remember like your factor tree, right? You guys could say you could do 4 times 3, and then you broke that down into 2 times 2 times 3. That was factoring. It was called the factoring tree because it kind of looks like a tree. And what were we really doing? We were taking our number 12, and we are writing it as a product of numbers. These are what we call factors, because when you multiply them, you get back 12, right? So that's when I say factor a polynomial, that's what I want you to do. I want you to rewrite this as a multiplication problem, all right? And the reason why we want to use it as a multiplication problem is because when we got to solving, which we'll do an example of later, when we get to solving, we want to use the zero product property. And that's why we want to write this as a product. So we need to write this as a multiplication problem of its factors. So we need to determine what are the factors. And there's a little way to help us determine the factors. And the first thing, the way that I like to do it, is use a marker that works. And I like to use the little x with the a times c and b on the bottom. Now remember, this is a quadratic. All quadratics can be rewritten in this form. Even if you don't have an a and a b, you can put a 0 in for them. But all quadratics can be written in this form when you have an x squared. Right, Brooke? So you have x squared. You can always write in. The only thing is a cannot be 0. So to figure out what the factors are, I do a times c. 2 times negative 5, which is negative 10. My b is negative 3. So now what I'm going to do is I'm not really going to like factor negative 10. But I'm just going to list all the factors of negative 10. That's a positive one. Because all of these numbers multiply to give us 10. Correct? Or to give us negative 10. So these are factors of negative 10. Right? One has to be positive, one has to be negative to for it to be a negative 10. So then I look at all my factors. Out of these factors, which one of them add up to give me negative 3? 
And the only possible solution is negative 5, positive 2. All right? So you think, oh, we got our two factors, right? Almost. You can't say that x minus 5 times x plus 2 is a product of the two factors. Because, remember, that your factors multiply to give you your number. So when I multiply these out by using FOIL, am I going to get this answer? No. x times x does not give us 2x squared. Negative 5 times 2 does not give us negative 5, right? So these are not the factors. So what do we do? Well, we have to go a couple other steps. So it's going to get a little hectic, but what I want you guys to do is with these two factors, we're going to rewrite them as negative 2x squared. I'm going to rewrite my middle term as negative 5x plus 2x minus 5. So what I did was I rewrote the equation with these two numbers that I determined is in, in, um, in substitution of my middle term. Now the reason why I do that is because remember it's always, it's always about like factor. Remember when we factor like from the beginning? Um, first thing you always want to look to factor out the GCF, which I didn't stop and talk to you about. But since these all don't share a number, now we want to look into what two numbers do they, sh do they all share a number again? No. But can we now, since we have four terms, can I now break it up into these terms and these terms? Now, is there something that these two terms share? Is there anything they share? How about an x, right? So you could pull out an x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out an x, so I'll be left with 2x minus 5. Then here, is there anything I can factor out? No. So I'm just going to leave that as plus a 2x minus 5. Now, remember, ladies and gentlemen, terms all right, are when you have variables or numbers multiplied by each other. Um, or divided. So what I have is I have two terms. All right, Terms are separated by addition and subtraction. So out of these two terms, is there something that they have in common? Yeah, the 2x minus 5. So what we're going to do is now we're going to factor that out. So when I factor out a 2x minus 5, I'm left with an x, x, and then what happens? If I factor this out, what's still there? A 1. Put it this way. What can you factor out of this? What do these two share? 3. So you factor out a 3, it's x plus 1. Where did the 1 come from? Well, remember, do destroy your property back again. 3 times x is 3x. Three, 3 times 1 is 3. So we have to have a 1 as our placeholder there. Does that make sense? So since, yes, there's nothing there, but we're, there's no number in front, but that really their number in front is a 1. So when you factor it out, you're left with that 1. So now, now I have my polynomial written as a product of the two factors. You guys see that? And we'll work on that further once we get into solving. But you guys can see right now, now it's a product of its two factors. So these are the two factors of that polynomial. Cool? Amazing. All right. Okay. So what we have is we have 2x squared plus 9x plus 9. So remember, ladies and gentlemen, to factor, what does factor mean? Factor means write it as a product of its factors. So we look at this and we say, you know, is there anything I can pull out or that they all share? And there is no term or number that they all share. So then I'm going to look into factoring that we've worked on, a factor in a trinomial, we worked with some techniques on how we can break it up into two factors. So one of the methods is what I'm going to explain, which is to take your A times C and then add it to find out what your B. So A times C is, remember, this: all quadratics can be written in the form of AX squared plus BX plus C. So A times C is going to be 18, and then B is going to equal 9. So then we think about it and we say, what two numbers multiply to give us 18? I had to give us 9. Yes, 6 and 3. So therefore, remember, when a does not have a coefficient of 1, what we need to do is we need to rewrite the problem. These are not your two factors, or these are not a part of your two factors. So we need to rewrite your problem a 
for our middle term. So we're going to take those two numbers that we figured out and rewrite them in our middle term. Yes? But remember, what's 6x plus 3x? 9x. But is, like I'm saying, is it okay if I, is this true? So does it really matter if I use 4 or if I use 3 plus 1? No. So that's the same thing. I'm just going to say instead of writing 9x, I'm just going to write 6x plus 3x. It's the same thing though, right? So the reason why I'm going to rewrite it like this, why I can't rewrite it, why I not leave this, the reason why I can rewrite it like this is because now what I've done is I've gone from three terms to four terms. And when you have four terms, we use factoring by grouping, which means we group our first two terms and we group the last two terms. Then we factor each one of those individually. So by factoring them, we pull out the GCF. So I say, what is the GCF of 2x plus 6x? And you can say it's going to be a positive 2x. Then you say, what's the, what's the GCF of 3x and 9? And you could say it's a positive 3. Now, what you guys notice is in this, in this kind of bracket here, I had two terms. Why do I have two terms? Because you have this is a term, and then it's added to another term. It's being broken up by an addition sign. So what I have again now is two terms. This whole expression is a term, and this whole expression is a term. So what do these two terms share in common? X plus 3. So you factor out an X plus 3, and you're left with And there you go. If you guys want to check your work to make sure you did factoring correct, you can always check your work. It's like going back to, remember when you guys solved the equations, you plugged the numbers back in, right? Factoring means taking a taking a uh, expression and writing it as a product. So if you're writing it as a product, why don't we multiply it and see if it works again? So x times 2x is 2x squared. x times 3 is 3x. 3 times 2x is positive 6x. 3 times 3 is positive 9. 2x squared plus 9x plus 9. Is that our original answer? Yes. So we factored it correctly as here is your factored form. Yes, Amber. From here to here? So remember, I just kind of pulled out what they had in common. Um, think about here. When you, what do they have in common? They have a 2x, right? So what you, divide, what you do is you divide each term by 2x. So 2x squared divided by 2x leaves x. 6x divided by 2x leaves 3, right? So what I have is if you're going to take this whole number and if you divided it by x plus 3, the x plus 3 divided by x plus 3 divides to 1. So you're only left with 2x, right? Yes? Watch. 3x plus 3. What can you factor out? Well, you can factor out a 3. Right? Because now, check your answer. Distribute a property. So do you see how when you divide out, you're left with these numbers? All right? So it's the same thing if it was like this. Um, 3 plus x times 3 plus 3 plus x. What can you factor out now? Instead of factoring out an x, what can you, or instead of um, factoring out a, uh, a uh, 3, what do these, both these terms share? They factor a 3 plus x. So when you factor out a 3 plus x, you're left with a 3 and a 1. Right? All right, so remember, ladies guys, remember when we were doing this to help us out, remember we're trying to factor, so we're trying to write this as a product of two factors, right? And what we notice, first of all, can we factor anything out of this? No, they don't no. share anything else. So what we do is we create our kind of thing here to help us re revolve this, which we can do A times C and then B. And we're going to want to find out which two numbers multiply to give us our A times C. So A times C is 2 times negative 6, which is negative 12. 12. Negative 12. 
3 is going to add. So what you guys need to do is think about all the factors that multiply to give you negative 12. And if you guys are getting stuck with this, just write them down, right? A lot of you guys I see struggle with this, but I don't see you write down the numbers that multiply to give you negative 12. Three times negative 12 four. Come on. Come on, man. But did you do 12 minus 1? It's prime. Come on, Diago. <laughs> That? All the possible combinations that multiply yeah, but no. add up to three. Okay, so let's look at it. Do any of these add up to give you negative three? No. No. So therefore, we can simply say that this is going to be prime. a prime. Mm. Meaning it cannot be factored evenly as we worked it. Okay. There you go. So how do we get to 